Cloud Show, and it's good to welcome you back and be here all again one more time. To, well, I say one more time. It's going to be, I hope, a gazillion more times, but this is the one time, only time today, really, we're going to be together. So thanks for joining me. It is a Monday. It's time to um, start up again, get the crank going, get another week, reach your goals, change your life, all that kind of inspirational, woohoo, motivational stuff. You know, somebody said to me the other day, yeah, aren't you a motivational speaker? I went, oh, gosh, no. Please do not ever call me a motivational speaker. I'm just, uh, I'm a practitioner. So I sit in the war rooms with people trying to figure this stuff out and make it work every day. And then um, I just kind of share my travels with you and what I've learned over the years and in helping helping people get to the next step and also as a fellow traveler on this road of life to making it work um so i'm right there with you so uh please no motivational speaker labels we are journeyers together fighting the war against dysfunction developing herd immunity against dysfunction one dynamic at a time and that's what we do here so to do that you get to call in and we get to share with you and here's the number 844-940-2774-844-940-2774-844-940-2774 put that on a little yellow post-it note and put it up on your screen or somewhere write it on your wrist with a sharpie or something so you can uh, because something might hit you and then you want to call in 844-940-2774. All right, one quick announcement. We have in our continuous uh, series, we've been doing uh, these two-hour webinars where we go deep. And, you know, in the show, we obviously we're we're limited for time. We're taking college, different junior, but we're doing two-hour deep dives, excuse me, um, on various topics where we have a two-hour webinar. We've done depression. We've done anxiety. We've done divorce recovery. All of those are still available, by the way, at Boundaries.me. But we have the next one coming up. Are you ready? The Marriage Equation is coming up on May 19th. The Marriage Equation. Now, what's the Marriage Equation? We're going to talk about marriage. And the way I've designed this two-hour event is for all of us, okay, because in here's what is true about marriage. There are some things that make marriage work, and there are some things that actually just kind of keep it from working. And we're going to talk about, you know, I always look at everything from the meta level that what are the dynamics and the principles without which things don't work. And if we can line ourselves up with those, sometimes it doesn't matter how dysfunctional or broken something is. You start to change a few dynamics and a few behaviors, and you can see incredible growth really, really fast on longstanding issues. Other times it takes, you know, obviously more time. But the way I've designed this, this is for all of us, no matter where your marriage is on the continuum. In other words, I think there's always kind of three groups and we all maybe sometimes have been in all three or in more than one of them. And the three groups are this. You're really, really in a lot of pain that, you know, it's kind of like you're even questioning, can can we make it or if we're going to make it, how are we going to make it? And that's group number one, where there's really something significant going on in your marriage that um, it's just not working, period. Second group is, Marriage is working. It's not at risk, but there is this recurring one or two areas that cause a lot of disconnect, that cause a lot of pain, or that cause a lot of dissatisfaction. A kind of a, um, you know, if you called on the show, you'd be able to say, you know, I got this issue with my husband or my wife or whatever, and we keep running into this, and I can't get him to, or I can't get her to, or whatever it is. So there's a, but there's a problem. You want to, you want to make better. And the third group, or where you might find yourself on the journey of marriage is, yeah, you know, things are good. They're good. But you know what? Just like Tiger Woods works on his golf game every single day when he's not recuperating from injuries. And when he is, he's working on that. That no matter how good we or you or I or others might be in whatever area or a marriage might be, it is like a beautiful garden that takes continuous work. So I've designed this two-hour event 
for all three groups. And we're going to be giving specific, very actionable things that can help. And I'm going to be describing those scenarios and you'll recognize yourself. If you and your spouse are just you, you know, it only takes one to change your relationship. Sign up and here's how you do it. Go to boundaries.me forward slash marriage, boundaries.me forward slash marriage. And you might want to gift this event to maybe um, an adult child of yours that's in a difficult situation or a friend or whoever. Um, I would love it. And we've done this one at a different time. This is going to be at 5 p.m. Pacific live. And then if you can't make the live event, obviously you can stream it afterwards, which is sign up for the live event. But I did it later because it'd be great if couples could watch it together. If you can't watch together live, then obviously you can stream it together live or watch it by yourself. Boundaries.me forward slash marriage coming up on May 19th. Get signed up today for that. I bet there's kind of a, we usually have kind of an early bird discount. I'll have to ask the team if that's true or not, but go get signed up and that's coming up. All righty. So let's jump into the thought for the day while the phone lines are filling up. You can still call in. I think we have a line open 844 940 2774. 844 940 2774. 844 940. I'm uh, 2774 is the number to call in. All righty. Uh, so we were discussing um, what topic to talk about. We had um, I'm one unnamed member on our team. Um, I'm not going to. I'm not going to say who, but uh, they said, well, I want you to talk about a specific topic because it's hot on my mind. And uh, that is accountability, accountability. Now, it's one of my favorite topics, um, but uh, this particular one of our team members was um uh, wanted to devote more time and energy to uh, kind of like, you know, getting in shape issues and maybe weight issues or whatever. I don't know why he or she wanted to do this, but they did. Um, it's a great thing. And here is kind of um, the truth about accountability from the get go. We mostly hate the word, right? I mean, think about this. When I say, I'm going to hold you accountable. Do you feel like a a policeman just showed up? B a senator on C-SPAN apparently somebody's going to be held accountable for this. Showed up, or your grade school teacher, or do you feel like, oh, thank God, somebody's going to come help me? What's your emotional reaction to accountability? What's your emotional reaction to the word? See, by and large, a lot of people have not had great experiences with accountability. Either it's failed or it's been punitive. And here's the truth about accountability. It is not something negative. It is, it is, it is life-giving in this way. Most people think about accountability as just looking in the rear view mirror. Okay, what'd you do this week? Did you touch anything bad? You know, did you do anything? I'm going to hold you accountable. And it's punitive. It's rear view mirror. It's, it's negative. But that's not the way it's supposed to be. The word accountability, the etymology of the word actually means to be held to a trust to be held to a trust. In other words, I've, I've entrusted this, whatever we're working on in our relationship, we're going to come and be an accountability partners in some way, or you're going to help hold me accountability to, to literally is it, it's to answer to a trust is the definition. So I've said, I'm going to do this. I want you to hold me accountable. And I want to, I'm entrusting, you're entrusting this in me. I'm entrusting it to you. And we're going to use it, not rear view, mirror oriented, but forward looking. Accountability is going to what? 
punish me for the past? No, it's going to help me get to where I want to go. That's what it's for. The analogy that I use all the time on this is think about this. This past week, I flew across the country. Okay, I hopped on a plane in Los Angeles and I flew to uh, where did I go? Well, a few places. Let's make up one. I flew, uh, well, at one point I landed, did I land in Atlanta, maybe? Anyway, let's pick Atlanta. Okay, I get on the plane. The pilot has been, remember, answer to a trust, has been entrusted to get the plane safely with all these lives on it and this really expensive piece of equipment to get it safely to Atlanta at a certain time. That's the promise. That's the expectation. That's the commitment. All right. You go up to that. You go up to that pilot and say, hey, I'd like for you to fly us to Atlanta without your accountability relationships. You know what she would say? No way would I ever do that. Because I want to ensure that I get this thing there intact on time safely. I'm not doing it without my accountability relationships. There's no way. Why? Because she sees them as insurance to help her get there. What are her accountability relationships that are going to help make sure she gets there? Well, the first one she has is sitting there right foot and a half in front of her on the instrument panel. See, she has made she's made a commitment to get to Atlanta by seven o'clock. And that's the expectation. And then she's also said there's going to be certain things I do to ensure that, which are a certain heading. Well, let's call it, I don't know, 45. What, no, what would that be? 43. What would the heading be from L.A. to uh, Atlanta? I think it would be about 40 degrees, 40, 50 degrees. I don't know. Anyway, let's pick one. 50 degree heading. 540 knots, 40,000 feet. She's committed to do that. All right. So she programs that into her flight plan. She takes off her first accountability relationships with that instrument panel. And you know what? They make sure she's doing it. All those instruments make sure she's doing it. If she gets off five degrees, her accountability partner goes, dee, 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 dee. Captain, you're off five degrees. Why would they want to tell her that because if you continue down this path you can end up in miami okay let's make an adjustment she goes thank you very much and she adjusts quickly okay well if that one didn't work then there's a tower down there about probably leaves airspace of la hits the tower in what las vegas or something you know, United American Delta flight, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you're four, you're 10 degrees, blah, blah, blah. And she goes, Oh, thank you very much. We got some wind up here. See, her accountability relationships are helping her get there. It's what an autopilot uses continuously. It's what every pro athlete uses. It's what every successful financial person uses it's what every every good surgeon uses around the table they look at have we done the antibiotic you know they're they're, they're hot. it's the only way we get anywhere and yet we as people think we're going to reach our personal and professional and health and marriage and every other goal without measurement and accountability are you kidding me why do we do this and yet the people that do well they do do it so here's kind of a quick formula and you know you can find out much more about this by going to boundaries.me and uh, becoming a subscriber we've got a few courses around this kind of thing on boundaries.me go there and check it out but it all starts out with um, seeing it as positive and then getting the right people or persons and then having some mutually agreed upon expectations we're going to agree on this flight plan that's what we're going to do and then having some way to inspect that and then defining what when will you have met the expectation and then defining okay if we don't meet it what are we going to do then how do we fix it 
And when you have that in place in life, you're going to get to places you never thought imaginable. And every situation, pretty much, that ever turns around, that's been stuck, is because there's an accountability structure to help them do it. Now, that's not the only ingredient we need, but it is an essential ingredient. We also need other stuff. We need support. We need information. We need teaching. We need guidance. We need practice. But without accountability, there's no way to know you're taking the medicine. How do we know if the medicine is working? So, a little word there on accountability. Go find yourself a good accountability partner. Don't find somebody mean. But somebody find somebody that's honest and, and firm and supportive or a group. You'll get there way better if you do that. All righty, 844-940-2774. Um, and let's go to Suzanne. She's calling us from Georgia. Suzanne, welcome to the program. Hi, Dr. Cloud. How are you? I'm good. Too. And well, you're from Georgia. I'm really, I'm really well because I was down in Georgia. A little over a week ago, and uh, what a beautiful yeah. uh, coastal! I mean, when you get over, it's it was so great. So I'm good. How are you? It it is nice. It is. I'm actually originally from Egypt, you know, country of pyramids, but I live in Georgia right now. Ah, well, welcome to. That's why, um, <clears throat> you know, I have this funny accent, so. <laughs> You only have a funny accent if you're in a place that doesn't have that same accent, right? <laughs> so tell me how I can help you. Um, I have a question about marriage. My husband is jealous from the attention I give to my children, and he mm. compares himself to them. He's like, uh, why don't you uh, you prepare the food for me like you do for them? And stuff like that. Like, But you can go ahead and do it, he said. I tell him you're not a child, you know, I'm not your mom, but, uh, it's just, what is, what, uh, what does that mean? What is, me. Hold on. Let, let, let me get specific. Okay. So sometimes in some relationships, it is one person that likes to cook and they do the food and sometimes they do it together. It's not a lot of different ways you can do life. So do you, Yeah. what does he mean when he says you don't prepare it for me like you do for them? Like you don't cut it up into bites or what's he talking about? No, it's just uh, like in the morning, I have to make sure the kids' breakfast is done and they ate their breakfast. And I have to call them to make sure they ate their lunch and dinner. That's an example, you know. And, um, wait a minute. Wait, wait, hold on, like, hold on a second. Wait, what, wait, 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 stop. Did you say you have to call them? Is that what you said? Like if, yeah, if I'm at work, I have to call to make sure that, you know, they ate. and uh, Or even if how my old? husband was them, I always want. Wait a minute. Well, hang How on. Old are I'm my trying kids? to hang on. I'm trying to understand the situation. How old are your kids? Ten and seven. Ten and seven. Yes, sir. Do they make their own breakfast and lunches? Um, usually not, but I get everything ready for them. <clears throat> And I always want to make sure, you know, I, I feel responsible about them. Let's say it this way. Um, well, you like can feel I responsible sure. about them. I, I'm going on down a different track here. Uh, we'll get back to your husband. Okay. But all right. Um, but I would. Um, I mean, I would. I would be. I would have a different plan than to make sure they ate their lunch and dinner. I would have a plan to ask how can I get them to where they're they're the ones that are making sure they ate their lunch and dinner and I can I can worry about my work or something else than making sure you know a 10-year-old feeds himself or herself. That's by that age, I mean they you know they could be looking at, at doing that themselves. I would think. Yeah. Unless there's some reason not. He can, but sometimes you know how kids get distracted and just no, and they get hungry and, and they get hungry and, and eat. they get hungry and yeah. they get hungry and if they get hungry, he'll they go do. find something to eat. Why does, yeah, why does but mom sometimes they might mom. go. 
<laughs> yeah. I'm just giving you something to know. think I, about. I, I'm just giving you something to think I about. I understand. Here. You're right about it. Yeah, the more we give them independence, it's the better. But uh, it might be something psychological. I lost my mom when I was a child. Oh. So maybe I, yeah, I was seven years yeah. when she passed away. So, uh, so let me, something, let me, yeah. this maybe, and as long as we're using the word maybe, I can say this because I don't know, but you're saying maybe, and I'm saying maybe. Um, sometimes yeah. I've seen this before. Um, there were some ways in which I had to become aware of that with my kids. Um, sometimes what we go through in our own, you know, childhood can make us kind of overcompensate in some ways for our own children when they don't need it because they're not in the same situation that we were in. You know, when I was, when when I was three, right before I was four, um, I had a hip disease and I went into a wheelchair and couldn't walk and, and braces and crutches for a couple of years. And, Oh no. Um, you know, it's a, it's a tough deal, right? So, and I remember when my kids started walking, I was like kind of over, oh, what is that, you know? And and Tori had to back me off. She said, they're fine, they're fine. And, I, you know, it's like, they're not in leg braces and crutches and wheelchairs. They're normal. You don't have to protect. And, and sometimes maybe you kind of feel like you know what it's like to be a kid without a mom and you want to make sure your kids have enough mom, right? And I can understand that. Yes. But you might want to look at that. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So is that what your husband's talking about? That he sees you kind of yeah. overmothering them? Yes. And and he's saying you love them more. I, I want this love and attention. It's like like the last time I was cooking something for the kids for lunch and he eats late. Yeah, you know, his breakfast would be at lunchtime. And he's like, can you do me something? So I can you cook something for me? And I was like, you can come and do it because I'm doing something else. And he, he got upset. He's like, why, why you don't give me like the attention you do for them? I was like, you can go ahead. You're adult enough. You can go ahead and do it. It's nothing. It's okay. not like that. I don't like you. Do you feel the resp- I asked him, <laughs> do you think I'm responsible about cooking for you? And he's like, it's not about responsibility, it's about love. And it just, it okay. makes me upset me, and annoyed, you know? Yeah, no, no I get it. I, I get it. Here's what I want you guys to try. I want you to um, kind of get out of the particulars of this, okay? And say, you know what? I think it's time for us to think about, let's let's sit down and really talk about how each of us experiences love from the other one. Okay. A lot of times, I mean, one of the most popular books that was ever written, um, what what was the name of it? Uh, Love languages or language, five love languages. Five languages languages of love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, And the premise is kind of like that. Not everybody feels love in the same way. And sometimes we can be honestly loving somebody. Because we would think, gosh, I'm doing something loving for you. I mean, some some wives might feel like I'm doing something loving for you. I'm taking care of our kids. So you don't have to do it. That could be a an act of love. He doesn't experience it that way, right? So sometimes we can have yeah. intentions that kind of like two ships in the night, you know, they kind of pass each other and they don't meet. And so what I would suggest is getting outside of the conflict and sitting down and say, saying to each other, let's each take some, a few minutes here and talk about what, what do you do that where I really feel loved? What's a big deal for me? And it might be a small thing and start to name for each other. This is when I feel loved by you. And then if it's not happening, begin to make requests. And say, I would really feel loved if you would do this or that. And what you might find is in that conversation, there's a lot of ways in which you, uh, you two might not be aware of how powerful certain things are for each other. That's where I would start. And then from there, what you got to go to is well if the list starts getting too, too long i can't love you 
in those 86,000 ways. Because if I do that, I can't get the kids on, on time or I can't. And then you start to kind of budget your time and pick, well, I can do this. I can't do that. But I want you to back off of it and ask him and he ask you what, uh-huh. you know, we don't know what the target is. We got to set the target first. So what does it mean for me to feel loved by you? And what does it mean for you to feel loved by me? And that's how I would start the conversation because you don't know where the conflict is until you set the bar. Okay. Try that. Yeah. Try that. And I appreciate your call. I would also um, suggest taking a look at my book, Boundaries in Marriage, because one of the things in the principles that that book talks about is um, that there are always, and I want everybody to hear this is, oh, by the way, can I say one more thing off script here? Script. I don't know. Script. Off topic here. In the boundary, the boundary, uh, little, 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 little. the marriage event, the webinar we got coming up on May 19th, the marriage webinar called The Marriage Equation. Um, I want to suggest to not only you married couples, but you dating couples, um, I would suggest that to you so you can look at your relationship. If you're thinking about getting serious, look at your relationship in light of some of the things that we're going to talk about. Because if if some of these dynamics, the bad ones are there or the good ones are not there, that's a yellow flag that y'all probably do well to talk about. And also, if you're single, to help you know the kind of dynamics that you're looking for and capabilities in a person that you're looking for to make a marriage work. Um, so that was a little side thing there. But what I was going to say about uh, in the book, uh, Boundaries in Marriage, um it talks about the a marriage has three stakeholders. Okay. In other words, three people that are invested in this relationship. Do y'all see a blinking light? My light is flickering here for some reason. Why is it doing that? I don't want it to look like a strobe light. We're not in a you know 70s disco light. You How's look good to me, light? man. It's not flickering. Didn't see wow, it's, it's like strobe light city in my eyes. Okay. Um, so here's the three people have to get fed by this marriage. Number one is the relationship itself. The relationship's the primary stakeholder. The marriage has got to get fed first. All right. But there's two other stakeholders. There's a husband and there's a wife. All right. And so this, in this entity that we form together, the marriage has needs that are we needs, the, each of the individuals has needs that this entity has got to make sure their needs are individually met. So there's like time and resources that have to go to each other's needs. You know, how do we need to make sure that you're getting what you need and you're getting what we need and we together are getting what we need that's the only way that it stays healthy so think about that sit down look at your time and money and resources and effort and say how much are we putting into we together and remember don't come up with an individual thing and call it a we thing well i think we need to go on more you know golf trips i tried that that didn't i wouldn't perceive as a we thing (laughs) but make sure a we thing is a we thing but also individually, you know, the relationship needs to provide for space and resources for each of you individually as well. So think about that. All righty. Christine, call us from Virginia with a dating question. And I love dating questions. Christine, welcome to the program. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, um, I am a widow of 10 and a half years, had a great mm. marriage. Um, I'm so sorry that you ago. lost your husband. Thank you. It really stinks. It's not. Yeah, yeah. that was rough. Still is sometimes, but it's, yeah. Anyway, um, so started dating after about a couple of years. Um, have been in two pretty serious relationships. My question is, um, okay, so I, I have a um, background in counseling. Um, so I spend a lot of time in my head and um 
my head and my heart and my body are not in sync. Like this last relationship, which I just lost, it was um, probably a five-year relationship of being best friend, dating sometimes best friend, kind of vacillating between the, the two because I'm a vacillator. Wait a minute. Wait, whoa, whoa. whoa. And I, I, I lost you there. It was five years of being best I'm friends sorry. and then what? And then what? And and dating, like we should be best friends. We should be dating. We should going back and forth kind of thing of trying to decide where our relationship is. In the five years you kept doing that or you were just friends for five years and then started playing ping pong? No, we've kind of ping pong through the five years. Through the five years. Okay. Yeah, yeah usually, I've had relationships. You had other relationships in the ping pong game too? Yeah, I well, yeah. I, shouldn't, not really I should not say in the ping pong game. I should say during <laughs> during the five years you've had other relationships. You, okay. you want to call it? I don't we don't want to play doubles. Anyway, <laughs> right? Right. But, right. What a, a a lot of my problem is is that um, I, this is. I mean, I have to be talked into things. And like I, my first boyfriend, I was talked into. Was my husband talked me into marrying him? I have a difficult time committing in that way and so a lot of it was my fault I would get so far and then I kind of vacillate and um, throughout the relationship I like we know each other really 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 well and so I would um, I have like the list the, the laundry list of the wonderful and the not so wonderful and I said you know if we ever marry which she was going toward that way um, I said we will know what we're getting into we can't say we didn't know but I, because I do know, it makes me. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. That's just a redundancy for date. I, what does that mean? In other words, you're, you're, you're kind of making an argument. That's sort of like saying, okay, I'm going to, um, I'm going to boil water for 10 minutes. And because I'm boiling it for 10 minutes, then in 10 minutes, I'm going to know it's boiled. Right. That's the purpose of dating. So what's special about the way that you're doing it? Is it is it hypervigilance? What, what's what? I mean, it's just normal dating. You date to get to know somebody and know what you're getting into or don't want to get into. OK, so we recently have we, we've decided that we were going to be best friends, that we were each other's persons and we would be that person for as long as we could, whatever. Which was Are fine. we talking about five year um, ping pong guy now? Is that who we're talking about? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. All right. And now so, you decide um, you're going to be he, best friends and no smoochy smooch, right? So is that where we are? Yes. Hard, but yes. Um, so he started dating someone else. And which he, he should. Up and said, which he should. If you what? told him that, he should, he <laughs> should do that. No, no, no. So he said, I'm feeling guilty about this. He said, it makes me wonder, should we re, should we reevaluate our situation? Oh, and that's a great reason I, to, to commit to somebody for that you're decided to be friends with because you feel guilty. I want a better reason than that. Well, we both told each other we love each other. We do love each other. We well, do. I love all that's my friends, true. but I'm not going to marry all of them. Right, 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 right. So look, what, so anyway, it, give, give me a question. Give, give me a question. Like, okay, so <laughs> right now, okay, this could go on another twenty years. To, I told him to to explore it, to go for it. Um, anyway, Good. we got into a, an argument, never argued before, and um, right now, so we are. So I've lost my best friend, kind of, but. I haven't been able to eat for three days and mm. I always figure things after the fact. And so what I'm just, so I'm, I'm frustrated with, it takes me so long to get into a relationship. And then once I do get into it, I get scared and then I exit. And then after the fact, I'm like, I blew it. And I've done that two times, maybe three since yeah, I but did. Since did you really died. hang on? Did you, did, I, I'm not going to accept that as true. Because I don't know if you know it's true. Did you really okay. blow it? Did you really blow it? Or or you're second guessing the right decision because you missed the good sides of it. Those are very different. 
Yes, you're right. Okay. You're right. Well, then that's a, that's an aggressive conflict. In other words, you made a you made an aggressive. I mean that in the good sense of the word. You initiated, and said you said I want a goal. That's what aggression is for: is to move us towards a goal. I want a goal, and the relationship I'm looking for is going to have all these pieces to it. This relationship has some wonderful pieces to it, but it's not all that I want. So I'm going to make a decision to to have a necessary ending and move on so I can look for the whole thing. Then I take three steps down the road and, oh, no, I missed the good half of that so much. I must have made a mistake. Right? (laughs) I don't know, I guess. Well, that's, you got out of it for some reason. I just, yeah. 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 Why did you get out of it? Why did you say this isn't the relationship I want? One of the reasons is because I've had men who have pursued and honored and treated me better than he has. And that was a big piece of it. Okay, forget the yeah, other been, men. Forget the other end. I don't want to play comparisons because you can idealize stuff too. Here's the question. Exactly. Does he per, does he pursue and treat you and do all the things that you want and are necessary for this relationship to work? Forget the comparison. In a, in a vacillating way. Okay. He's, he's as much of a vacillator as I am. He goes okay, he go but, back and forth. Whoa, 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 whoa. You just, you just answered my question. If I'm going to make a commitment to somebody, I want consistency. Unless you don't, then right. commit to a vacillator if no. that's what you want in your life. No, no. Right? <laughs> no. Right. You're right. But but I guess the hard part is that we've shared five years of, of not all phys- not physical intimacy, but everything else intimacy. And it's just very, very difficult to have that place, that safe person, that whatever, and they're gone. And right. Yeah. And so yeah. my body is responding <clears throat> different from my head, from my, from my heart. Your body's responding differently than your heart? Well, I mean, my heart still wants to be in relationship with him, and my body will not let me eat. Well, no, it does. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on. That's not what you just told me. Okay. You just told me. Okay, that's you just told mean. me. You told me part of your heart wants to be in relationship with him, the part that was being fulfilled, but there was another part that was missing some stuff. Right. And, well, it's really and hard because I had him. A- I have to go what? to the comparison of my husband. I had, I had, I had the most amazing husband, and there, therein lies a piece of the problem. Well, I would say that's a gift that your husband gave you to know what to look for. Uh, it doesn't have to ooh, be a problem, and your husband's standard, which, mm. which I'm sorry, they're they're. There's only one Superman, and he was only Superman at that <laughs> time, right? So what your right. husband was right. giving you, what your husband was giving you was super, but he's not the only person uh-huh. in the world that has those qualities. And if you listed those qualities, we, that would be very apparent. He was loving. He pursued you. He didn't vacillate. He was secure. All those things. Those are awesome qualities. Right. And your problem is not that you're comparing somebody the problem is that you're not accept it sounds sounds like i don't know your old problems but you, it sounds like you're not accepting that as a standard that you're going to hold yourself to going forward Ooh. Ooh. That's, that's more the issue so i would say based on what you said unless there is some sort of you know fear dynamic that causes you to to devalue a guy that does meet the standard but it doesn't sound like this relationship did the way you're describing it. So okay. I would say, look, if you in your heart of hearts, you got to remember why did you say no to this relationship? There were very good reasons, apparently, unless there weren't good, good. and you were just throwing up on a good guy. I think it's a piece of both. So I have to figure that out. But it doesn't matter anyway, because we are no longer so don't want to do this again 
Well, then why don't you, first of all, if you're lonely without him, do you not have a good support system apart from this guy? Oh, I have wonderful women friends. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. So go run to them and say, help me figure out what I'm looking for in a man and help me find that guy. Because Joey (laughs) was half of that and Joey's gone and I want to do better. I want to find somebody don't vacillate with. All right. I got to run. Everybody's. Okay. Bye. Everybody's what? Everybody's what? Everybody's everybody's been doing that for a long time. They say, I can't understand why you're not married again. Blah, 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 blah. They've all been. I can tell you why you're not married again, because you're, you're spending time with somebody you don't want to marry. Where's the hard question here? Okay. So Thank I'm, you. That I'm, was hang, good. I'm hanging out on Highway 10, and they're asking me, why don't you, why aren't you, you know, why aren't you in Dallas yet? Well, I got to get down to Interstate 20 to get to Dallas. But I'm staying over here on <laughs> I 10. Well, that's not a hard question. Look, I'm going to gift you uh, the two hour webinar. On, it's on boundaries.me. Anybody can get it. It's called How to Get a Date Worth Keeping. I'm going to gift it to you, and you're going to find some dynamics in there that might be helpful to you. And I love your call. Thank you for sharing your story with us because a lot of people, a lot of singles are hanging out and hanging on, hanging out and hanging on. Because when you, you know, it's not what you're looking for. And actually hanging on is keeping you from what you're looking for, but you're hanging on maybe out of fear, maybe out of loss. It's too hard to let go. Maybe whatever, maybe Or some of you are hanging out and hanging on instead of committing because there's fear involved. But the question is, is this what you really want and you're scared versus is this not what you really want and you're scared to admit that this isn't what you really want and move on? And sometimes that can waste years and years and years. So think about that. You can find that that webinar, How to Get a Date Worth Keeping, by going to boundaries.me. A lot of these dynamics are really, really important in there. Okay, let's talk about, uh, uh, well, it looks like another dating question. Danielle, who's calling us from Pennsylvania. Danielle, welcome to the program. Hi, Dr. Cloud. Hi, Danielle. How are you? Oh, I'm doing well. How are you? Well, I'm not doing as well as you, and I'll tell you why, and only you will know this. It's not going to make any sense to anybody else because they're not from Pennsylvania. But <laughs> I just did an interview with a TV show in uh, so it was either Pittsburgh or Philadelphia. I get them confused. And I just happened to mention that I love Tasty Cakes. Oh, and you yeah, know what those nice thing. people did? They sent me a box of (laughs) Tasty Cakes, and they were so awesome. And now I'm out. And that's why I say you're doing better than me because you live in Pennsylvania where you get Tasty (laughs) Cakes. They're more more accessible, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Which which you guys take for granted and go, oh, my gosh. Anyway, so tell me why you call. Tell me why you call. It wasn't about Tasty Cakes. But shout out to the Tasty Cakes people. (laughs) It was not about the Tasty Cakes. But um, I'm calling because my boyfriend and I have been together for eight years. We just bought a house ah, together in December. Wait, have- whoa, whoa. <laughs> Did you say eight years boyfriend? Yep. Yes, yes. Coming up on eight you years. Guys, yes. Does anybody does anybody own a, a, a watch? Um, you know, there were a lot of things. Um, you know, he's <laughs> really big mama's boy, which is one of the reasons I'm calling you. Um, really big mama's boy, never went away to college, never lived on his own, never had to do anything for himself. How his old parents is he? paid his bills. Right now parents, he's 32. Parents paid his bills. Yes. Um, by can, I, paid his can, bills I get in, can I get in on this program? Can I get in on this program? <laughs> I, I want his parents to pay yeah, my bills. Yeah. I know. How well, old are they you? paid his bills out of his bank account. Um, I am 31. Um, this was back. Wait a minute. Wait, wait, we wait. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. <laughs> Hang on a second. They paid his bills out of his bank account, but he's never yes. worked. So where did his bank uh, account come from? No, 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 no. He worked. He just, so this was back when we first started dating. Um, they would, you know, write checks from his bank account. Like basically 
not giving him, you know, any responsibility whatsoever. Um, since then, he has bought a house. We both bought separate houses. Where where does his money come? Years. Where does his well well where does his money come from? He has a job and has always had a job. Okay, so he's not being supported by his parents. No, 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 no. They were just doing like you know, taking care of the actual things. Um, but so okay, so now you know things on that end have gotten much better. Um, but you know, his previous house, you know, his mom decorated would bring things over constantly. Um, you know, which has always been an issue, but you know, when I would say, Hey, like, let's get some boundaries here. It was, you know, it's not hurting you. I don't know why it bothers you. So I thought it was hurting. Now we're at, it was bothering. Oh, it is hurting me, but it's not exactly, but it's not, I guess, directly pertaining to me. Um, but so fast forward. Well, well, it depends on how, it depends on how much you guys are kind of, you know, sharing in the experience of the house. Some people, you're right. You know, it's his house. You got your house. He can do whatever he wants, but it sounds like this kind of, this relationship had a little more weedness than, than just dating. Right. Yes. Exactly. Yes. I mean, it wasn't like, you know, this was a casual thing, but so now okay. we have our so own. It sounds houses. like you're, it sounds like you're dating Joey and his mother. So what's the question? The question is, you know, his mother is very, very emotional. Um, and anytime you tell her anything, she cries period. It, she cries. <laughs> um, Listen to that sentence. I love it. I love this sentence. Okay. Maybe not anytime, anything. <laughs> anytime you tell her anything, she cries, period. <laughs> well, wow. That's, you a, know, that's for, emotional. <laughs> she's very emotional and she means okay. well, but you know, for Valentine's day, we had just moved in. Our house is crazy. We weren't doing anything. We were both fine with Wait a minute. it. We, we, well, we moved in. Yes. We live in the same house. Now we bought a house together. You bought a house together with the boyfriend. Yes. Yes. But you guys aren't married. We are not, which. Good luck with that. I know. Yes, I know. Okay. However, yes. So, yes. Um. Valentine's Day came. We weren't going to do anything because, you know, boxes still everywhere. His mom bought flowers, gave them to him to give to me to say that they were from him. Which and this surprises away. you? Why? Why does this surprise you? I told her specifically we didn't need to do anything. Um, but then and, I and it's her and, and it said, surprised hey, you. you. Wait a minute. Hold on. It's listen <laughs> to yourself. You have seen yep. this day in and day out for eight years. Every time you've ever said something about it, he protests it and preserves it and defends it. And she's in on it and she can't take any feedback because anytime you tell her anything, she cries, period. And this <laughs> one instance surprised you? So, okay, I guess you're right. I should not be surprised. I was surprised at him going along with it because i said why i don't want the flowers if they're from your mother whoa, and he whoa, said whoa, no whoa, no whoa. they're stop, from me. stop 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 mm-hmm. you said that <laughs> before for eight years mm-hmm. okay yeah okay i've got a doberman she barks <laughs> mm-hmm. i don't get surprised if she doesn't meow all right yep that's fair and i could tell her finley tomorrow i want you to meow now i told her and she came in and barked again. Like, can you imagine that? Uh, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. All right. So, Danielle, come on. What's your question? Mm-hmm. All right. Well, so recently, last this is last week, his mom was watching his niece and nephew. Um, she said she was going to bring them to our house, which would be fine, except we were both working. We now have a really big yard. You know, we have a dog. It, it was a recipe for disaster, which I expressed to him and said, hey, you know, we're both working. I don't think this is a good idea. Who's going to watch our dog uh-uh. while the kids are playing? What's, yeah. So, but, you know, his mom pushed right on through and also brought his dad, who is very sick. Um, so it then became, you know, 
my dad wants to be with the kids and, you know, at his son's house, what's wrong with that? So that I'm the bad person. Um, long story short, our dog bit his niece. I was working and not there because I said, I'm working. I can't, I'm not going to be available. His niece was okay, but you know, the act still happened and all this could have been avoided if he would have said, you know, we're both working. This doesn't work for us, period. That's it. And now here we are. Is the niece okay? Yes, she is okay. Um, she was startled, um, obviously. And, you know, it's, yeah, like it was horrible. I feel bad. The dog is my baby. Are you in a been one, around the kids are, before. Is Pennsylvania a one or two bite state? I'm honestly not sure. And now his brother and sister-in-law are, you know, they're okay, not okay with it, but, you know, I reached out to them, made sure she was okay. We both did. Um, okay. Well, I would but, just tell you, you better check on that. You could have yeah. some issues there. Um, so what's, what is the question? It, all you're telling me is the same pattern has happened for eight years. So what do you want me to do about that? What can I do to make him see that, you know, these boundaries, you know, if, hey, you know, your mom needs to confirm with both of us. or Stop, 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 mm -hmm. stop, stop. You just ask an impossible question. Okay. What can you do to make your mom see, is that what you said, make him see? that your mom yes. needs to ask both of us. His mom mm -hmm. does not need to ask both of you anything. Her only need okay. is for you to stop giving mm -hmm. her grief, right? She, she does not feel the need mm -hmm. to ask you at all, right? Yeah, I guess, yeah. That's not, that question's probably not going to ever, that's never going to happen. Unless mm -hmm. what you have to do is you have to decide how is he ever going to experience the need to have some boundaries with his mother? Because mm -hmm. right now he does not feel that need at all. Mm -hmm. And so one way would be to say, I am not going to share governance of our relationship and our time and our energy and now our physical property. I'm not going to share those decisions with your mother. Now, you get to choose who you want to share those decisions with. Is it going to be me or is it going to be your mother? Mm -hmm. That would be one way. And then when you take that stand, mm -hmm. he may have the thought, oh, if I'm going to keep her, meaning you, I need to mm -hmm. talk to my mother. See, now we transfer the need onto the shoulders of the only person who can do anything about this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It just depends on how long you want to, you want to continue to, to keep enabling this or living with and they, uh, what, agreeing to this whole dynamic. Yeah. No, yeah, that's completely right. And it's, you know, it's been and, made more difficult by the fact, you know, that his parents have no relationship whatsoever. They're still, t they're still married, but his mom leans on him for essentially the role of a husband. I understand. So and I wish we had more mm -hmm. time, but yeah, I'm going to tell yeah, you something. You all, you, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to tell you something you already know, and then I got to go. Mm -hmm. I want you guys to, yeah. you know, sign up for my my boundaries and or not my boundaries, the the marriage equation. Yes. Webinar and I'm watch it together to because you, you guys you guys are I mean everything but the paper you, you guys are married. Yes. You know you went way ahead of the, the yeah the cart for the oh, horse here. I, yeah. Yes. So you have got um, you've got a and here I'll, I'll leave with this and I'm not I'm not mm -hmm. criticizing you here. I'm trying to get you to hear yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. What yes. you have told me is one thing 
one thing you can certainly depend on that he mm-hmm. is going to continue to choose his mother in a lot of different decisions and dynamics, her wishes over yours. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's what you've told me. I'm not making this up. It might be right or wrong, but that's what yeah, you no, told you're... me. Okay. Yeah. So you yeah. get you get to decide, is that the way that I want to live my life? And is that the kind of relationship I want to have? And then yeah. if you say yes, you can continue to do it. If you say no, then you can take some sort of stand where, you know, you guys get to decide this. But what you can't do is probably continue to wish just telling him is going to make it happen. That's what you've told Mm me. All I'm doing is telling what you've told me. Okay. Mm Mm-hmm. And Danielle, I wish we had more time, but um, I appreciate your call and your vulnerability and your openness with us. And maybe someday we'll sit down and have a tasty cake. (laughs) Hey, that sounds good. Thank you so much for taking the call. I appreciate it. Okay. I want you to think about this. Okay. There you Mm -hmm. go. All righty, guys. There's something to learn here. If you were listening, Um, one is if you are dating... It's sort of like the previous call, you know, you can't, you can't really have it both ways. I mean, are you dating or are you going to be serious and, you know, turn this thing into a real commitment? And if you are, then it's got to have certain requirements or you're going to be unhappy. And what some people do is they continue to do in a dating relationship continue to do a pattern that for whatever reason is not fulfilling or good enough or right enough to jump in with both feet and then to be upset that it's not satisfying you when you know that it's not satisfying you that's like i said to her I, i i don't know what you want me to do you, you, this is how it is. It, I got to ask you, is that what you want or not? And that's what you have to get in touch with. Is this what you want or not? And sometimes people can't let go, but they can't move forward. That's called stuck. And we have to find out the answer to that. Okay. Um, where are we? Uh Probably got time, I think, maybe for one more quick call. Tom, I hate to rush you against the clock, but welcome to the program. Hey. Thanks for having me. I'll try to try to make it a, a quick for you. Um, yes, sir. I'm sorting through a number of big transitions in my life, and I'm about to change jobs and go back to grad school. Uh, oh, cool. What are you going to be studying? At, uh, yeah. I'm going to go be a PA, physician assistant. Very, very cool. What do you do now? I work in healthcare. Currently, I'm in surgery. I work in surgery, working as a uh, a support to doctors in ortho and neurosurgery. In in ortho. In ortho and neuro, yeah. Oh my gosh! Will you come help me? I'm about to have spine surgery in two and a half weeks. <laughs> I work in spine surgery every day. Yep. Well, come so, do it right now. Um, telemedicine, just tight here. I'm going to turn around and you fix this thing. I won't have to go through all that. <laughs> Please tell me that you see some good results every now and then. <laughs> there are great doctors out there that do amazing work. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. trust your gut when you find one. <laughs> I trust my gut um, and so my also question, a, lot of, a lot of research. So tell, tell me your question. A lot of research, right. Um, so my question is, I'm going through a big career transition I'm moving out of state. Um, I'm, there's just a number of transitions in my life, including like I'm sorting through re-entering the dating scene after my divorce. And I've got a, my father's probably moving towards his, he's, he's towards the end of his life and things are starting to go downhill pretty quick. And mm-hmm. I'm just dealing with a lot of Sorry. big emotions around all of these things going on. And That's a I'm lot. Really That's hard a lot on, at once. That's a lot at once. It is. And... I'm working really hard on not suppressing these emotions, but also not letting them be in the driver's seat. And it's been making for some really confusing experiences of myself. And I'm wondering if you have any direction or tips or thoughts on 
kind of how to structure my my life and structure my my experience of myself as I sort through all this stuff. Yeah. Wow, what a great question. So you got you had a career change. You're leaving something established. It's obviously been working well, or you wouldn't be continuing in healthcare, mm-hmm. right? You love it. You're you're doing well. You got yep. accepted, which means you're a high performer and you know, got yeah. good recommendations. And I'm and really passionate kind of about it. I'm I'm yeah. I'm really confident people, this is a good a good fit for me. Yeah, and you're leaving you're also leaving a place where people love you, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So that's, that's yeah, a lot I'm going to a place to a state that I've never been to for, for people like with a community that I don't know yet. Yeah. And, um, that's a big deal. How I'm long have you been a lot divorced? of fear about transition. About How long two years. Been divorced? Two years. Two so years. you're just kind of healing from that and you got to, this is a mm-hmm. lot. Okay. So I got one question yeah. for you. You said you don't want to suppress your emotions. That's smart. You want to regulate them, but you said you mm-hmm. don't want to be in the driver's seat. What does that mean? What's the fear about emotions being in the driver's seat? I'm afraid they're going to lead me astray. Oh, like you might. I'm afraid that I'm going to get to a spot. Like I might, like I might end up doing something that's bad for myself if I let the emotions make make the decisions for me. What would be a decision that would be bad for yourself based on emotion, like turning back? Um, that's actually a really good point. <laughs> Letting the emotion of fear hold me back from moving forward would hurt myself. Okay. That's a good, um, has um, that ever happened before? Has you ever gotten afraid and kind of done a U-turn? Yeah. Um, I have struggled with big transitions before in my life and they've kind of like right after college, I moved to moved away from the West coast to the Midwest for a job and spent a year of being really isolated and really struggled with reestablishing myself. And and I think there's some fears from that that's coming up. Um, I know that there's some fears about dating with, uh, you know, after the divorce that are still coming up and, you know, I don't want the emotions of fear around divorce to guide my dating decisions. Yeah. Okay. But they seem very muddled right now. <clears throat> All right. Um, good, good, good questions. You got a lot of change. So one of the, the first thing I would tell you is this, that um, one of the best ways to not have fear drive your decisions is number one, number one, number one is to normalize the fear. Now, here's what happens. People start to lean in to look at, expect, anticipate, or experience fear. And then they start to try to deal with the fear, right? Okay, when you try to deal with a fear, that's like feeding a monster. That makes fear get bigger. It's like, calm down, calm down, calm down. I can't calm down. Oh, no, I can't calm down. I'm not calming down. Oh, no. So it's just going to escalate. Right. Exactly what's you happening can't, multiple times a day. Exactly, exactly. So what if I said to you, hey, Tom, you are going through a lot of change here, Bubba, and it's going to be it's going to be a roller coaster, man. You're going to have days where you like feel like you're having panic attacks. You're going to wake up at night. You're going to worry. All that. What if I said that to you and said, but that's okay. That's going to happen. That's going to be normal. Okay. That sounds a lot any... more. What? Go ahead. No, I'd rather hear. I what was you, about to say it just sounds answer. like that's. It sounds like that's. I mean, I think you're kind of touching on something that I'm. I'm learning about myself is that I. Uh, I don't like to give myself much patience or grace about with what I'm experiencing, <laughs> and so what you exactly. just said is and, a very different approach I'm, to that. And I'm giving you a neuroscience based i mean you you trust evidence based tr- treatments right mm-hmm. i do <laughs> once you did the reason why you felt something a little hopeful or good there was it it puts a barrier against the most destructive aspect of this and that's not the fear the most destructive aspect is the fear of the fear mm-hmm. so if you say you know what? Of course, this is going to be scary. 
of course I'm going to feel amped up. Now, you know, you know from your training that, you know, cortisol and adrenaline and all of that, when, when you make change, your system amps up. That's just stimulation and awakening. And actually, that makes for better performance up to a degree. Uh -huh. And so I want you to understand there is no way in hell to go through this much change without your system going, ah, what you got to work on. What you, it's like a, it's like an Olympian that's, that's about to dive into the pool, waiting for the gun to go off. They're amped up. But if they said, oh, no, I'm amped up. Oh, I'm going to drown. That would be a problem. <laughs> They're just used to that feeling. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's what I want you to do. And I got to hurry here, but I want you to do that. I want you to normalize it. Number two, I want you to plan, plan along the way. I want to have a structure where you have a couple of people that you have a dosage schedule. If you don't give the antibiotic by a certain time, you're going to risk infection. Right. You know this. Okay, uh -huh. so we're not going to let your brain get infected. We're going to administer the antibiotic of connection and process by phone. You're not going to Zoom. I mean, you're not going to isolate it. You're going to set up some Zoom people from where you were. You're going to get there. You're going to go join a group. You're going to find a counselor. You're going to do something where you're looking ahead. And I want the, I want the structure of the railroad tracks to lead through this transition. Lay down the track before you start the car. All right. So we want support. Okay. And you want some guidance and all of that. Then I want you to prioritize. Number one, get plugged in to some sort of stable community. Before the dating thing should be kind of like third on the list, right? You got to get it's, plugged it's, it's, in. It's not my priority. It's it's part of the mix, but it's not it's not on the top of the list. Okay, it's flooding from emotional dysregulation. Probably it's all coming in at once. But anyway, I want you to yeah. set up that structure yep. and, and prioritize getting the look for you before you redo a building. They put the the scaffolding up to hold the building up while you're remodeling. it. Mm -hmm. OK, what do you guys okay. do? What do you guys do in surgery? You make sure all the all the life support is there. Before you start, you know, like they did me last year, you've seen total knee replacements. That's ugly, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But before they start amputating your stupid leg, which is what I accuse them of doing, they stabilize you first so you can go through that. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what I want you to put in place with a lot of good support and some wisdom around you. Okay. Got to run. Okay. I'm going to do something. Um, talk to Albie when you get off the phone. And let him get your information. I'm going to gift you my two-hour webinar on overcoming anxiety because it's going to be going to depth on a lot of things we talked about. All righty? Sounds great. Thanks, Dr. Okay. And thank you, and God bless you in your chosen path here. You know, uh, what a cool profession. You know, PAs are really filling filling the good ones are filling a big gap in making frontline kind of healthcare accessible. The ones that are, are doing great jobs of that. So hope it goes well for you. All righty. Um, we are out of time. Once again, we'll be here tomorrow doing all this again. Um, thank you callers. Thank you for sharing your stories with us. A lot of stuff we learned today. A lot of stuff we learned away. A lot, a little I learned about today. First of all, we learned about that sometimes you can be trying to love somebody and they don't feel loved by your efforts because there's a mismatch in the way that they experience love and maybe the way that you think what you're doing is loving. We judge ourselves by our intentions. Other people experience our behaviors and there may be a mismatch. And then we talked about um, not being able to let go of something that's unsatisfying or possibly devaluing something that could be satisfying to retain not having to make a commitment. And that's a decision that people have got to make. So are your standards unrealistic or is it unrealistic for you to 
think that something that doesn't meet your standards is going to make you happy? Good questions to think about. And then when you see a pattern continue for eight years, and then it shows up again, don't be surprised by that. Don't be disappointed by that. Open your eyes to see that's what I can expect to happen tomorrow. Now, what do I want to do about that? Let patterns speak to you. And then finally, when we make changes, when we try something new, if it doesn't activate the system, chances are it's not even a big enough change. It's not even a change. Change makes us nervous. It makes us anxious. So what? First time you do something, your body is doing its job. It's telling you, whoa, error, error, error. This doesn't fit the map. We know how to do life. We've done it this way all these years. Now you're doing something new. What are you doing? Ding, 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 ding. Cortisol, adrenaline, all this kind of stuff. Go back, go back, go back. Error, error. That's what it's supposed to tell you. And then you say to it, no, it's not an error. We're trying something new. I haven't made the new map yet, so I'm going to be lost here for a while. And by the way, thanks for reminding me. And I'll be nervous here for a few months and kind of worry. And uh, But it'll be okay. It'll be okay. I'm going to keep going. You guys are awesome. You share the greatest stories. You share the greatest journeys. Thank you for letting us join in with you. And it's just a, a privilege to be with you day after day. And so thank you, callers. And thanks for the rest of you to support each other on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And share the show with your friends you can also hear the show as a podcast we load it on as a podcast so when you're working out or when you're in the (laughs) when you're in the or i guess they still play loud music and when they're doing like remember all those shows from way back where the you know the surgeons have got like you know led zeppelin playing in the background (laughs) i don't know if they do that maybe listen to the podcast anyway Check it out as a podcast. And don't forget, if you are married or want to be, check out the two-hour webinar upcoming. Go sign up for it. Go to boundaries.me forward slash marriage for a two-hour webinar that I'm going to be doing upcoming on making a marriage better if it's hurting or better if it's not hurting. How do we get out of pain and how do we get even to greater and greater, greater satisfaction? Boundaries.me forward slash marriage. Okay, guys. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.